So recently, I asked readers to share how they're using large language models like ChatGPT to learn and study. Today, I'm going to round up some of those suggestions and try to synthesize the advice for when and when not to use these tools for learning. Strengths and weaknesses of large language models. Using applications like ChatGPT requires some care. Part of the difficulty is that ChatGPT's human-like conversation abilities can be deceptive. Feeling like you're talking to a real person encourages you to rely on conversational expectations that don't always hold with a machine. For instance, we generally expect that most people do not make up facts. Large language models, however, routinely violate this expectation by providing fluid answers that may be totally wrong. The metacognitive ability to know what you don't know is underdeveloped in these applications, at least as of this recording. Another expectation we have is that verbal fluency tracks to other aspects of intelligence. We expect that someone who can spout lines from Shakespeare, explain quantum computing, and give a proof of the prime number theorem in rhyming verse would be able to count. Thus, naively treating large language models like really smart and knowledgeable people is likely to backfire. Those caveats aside, ChatGPT is clearly helpful for a range of tasks. Simon Willison suggests thinking of large language models as a calculator for words, something that can do useful things with text rather than as a general purpose intelligence or a really smart person. I tend to agree. The more we can distinguish the cases where these kinds of applications work well from where they don't yet, the more we'll be able to take advantage of the new capabilities without falling into unexpected traps. 10 Useful Learning Strategies with ChatGPT After receiving dozens of emails from my audience about how they've personally been using ChatGPT to learn, I've compiled some tips along with some of the most common suggestions. Number 1. Create Your Own Socratic Tutor By far, the most common use readers reported was using large language models as a personal tutor. Asking ChatGPT to explain tricky concepts, unfamiliar code, or problems seems like an area where these kinds of applications might do all right. And the only reasonable substitute, a human expert, is notoriously expensive and in short supply. So if you do this in conjunction with a class or textbook, the risk of mistakes also seems attenuated, since you still have a primary source to compare your answer against. Challenge explanations that don't jive with what you've read in the book rather than taking everything that the AI says at face value. Number two, practice chatting in new languages. The next most common way people used AIs to learn better was as a language tutor. This seems like a task AIs are well equipped for. Whatever their other flaws, they can produce grammatically correct text. Many people set up their conversations with ChatGPT so that the AI could go back and forth between the language they're learning and English explanations when they got confused. Likely those explanations are going to be imperfect, but human tutors often give incorrect accounts of the grammar and vocabulary that they use proficiently. Another use is rewriting text to be a more beginner-friendly level of reading comprehension. Graded readers and comprehensive input are great strategies for learning to read in another language. Unfortunately, learner materials are often sparse or relatively boring. If you can use an AI to transform a text that you actually want to read into one that is written at a fluent native level into something that's more appropriate for your current ability, then you'll be able to read more things. Duolingo seems to be getting in on the AI game as well. I've been a little bit harsh on the drag and drop style of learning used in earlier versions of the app, but these new advances may force me to revise my opinion on their software. Number three, generate summaries of longer texts. Summaries are another area where large language models seem to excel. Consumer applications already exist for generating summaries of journal articles and research topics. Several readers told me that they were using these AI tools to provide digests of their substantial reading material, helping them keep atop of new developments in their field. Good summaries, especially those fine-tuned to your particular needs, might be a good way to navigate the large information loads that we often face in knowledge work. You could use it to help prioritize which documents to read in depth or do a first pass in organizing unfamiliar material. It looks like ChatGPT is not able to open links to summarize directly, but it often does a reasonable job hallucinating with famous texts like the ones that I've used in the example here. Until this functionality is standard in consumer applications, it's probably best to copy and paste what you're trying to summarize. Number four, dialogue with long documents. AI can also help you ask questions of longer texts. For instance, when reading a scientific paper, you could quickly query the sample size or ask for the methodology or the results. Consensus, an AI application, does this while offering references, so the risk of making mistakes is reduced if you can easily double-check the AI's work. 
While there are some more fanciful usages here, such as people asking ChatGPT to impersonate a given writer and dialogue with them, I suspect that the ability to ask natural language questions of documents and receive useful replies with references is going to be very helpful when dealing with large text. Now, that being said, you have to be prepared to fact check the AI's answers. For instance, in the dialogue that I captured and I'm showing here, I asked ChatGPT to list the evidence supporting strongly guided instruction, and it cited a review article by Mayer. But it falsely claimed that Mayer's work was a meta-analysis, which it wasn't. In fact, the paper isn't even a comprehensive literature review, but just simply looks at three prominent cases of the failure of discovery learning. So if taken at face value, this response can be potentially misleading. So it's relatively easy to check the AI's work, but you have to know what text it is that it's transforming. Number five, rewrite text at completely different levels of explanatory depth. So a major difficulty in following expert thinking is that most expert level text is written for other experts. Concepts are unexplained and context is lacking and jargon abounds. This means that most people must rely on translators such as general market nonfiction or science writers who present what experts think in a more readable format. There seems to be two approaches to using AI tools here. One is to simply ask a large language model to explain a popular concept in simpler terms, so explain quantum computing like I'm an eighth grader. And the other is to provide ChatGPT with a text or explanation and ask the AI to rewrite it in a more digestible manner. I tend to think the latter is a little more reliable since you have the source material to compare with rather than just taking ChatGPT's word for it. Number six, clear up unfamiliar jargon. So several years ago, I remember reading Tyler Cowen's Marginal Revolution blog and being frequently perplexed by his unexplained use of the term Straussian to describe ideas or other thinkers. I remember Googling around for an explanation or definition, but none was particularly forthcoming. Now, after a lot of research, I roughly understood the term as meaning closely reading between the lines in prominent thinkers' ideas, looking for what they really meant, but couldn't always express because of prevailing censorship and intellectual orthodoxy. Now, had ChatGPT existed during my confusion, I could have just gotten this. Many readers found similar benefits in using large language models to figure out jargon and terms within a particular community in a way that dictionary definitions often fail to explain. Number seven, create study plans and agendas. Now this usage surprised me, but it showed up enough times among the reader replies that I'm including it here. People seem to like using AI to tell them how and when to learn. For instance, some readers ask ChatGPT to break down a complex learning goal and give them a curriculum. Others prefer to even go further, asking ChatGPT to give them a studying schedule, given their constraints for the day. Now, I probably wouldn't trust large language models to give me a well-designed curriculum for a subject, but if I was learning something completely new, it might be a decent starting point. Sometimes the hardest part of approaching a new field is breaking down what appears to be an insurmountable goal. Similarly, sometimes being told when to study can help overcome the inertia of actually getting started. While skill breakdowns might be alright, ChatGPT struggles with creating reading lists, confabulating books and references. So while it might do well for decomposing an ambiguous learning task, I wouldn't trust it to give me good resources. At least not yet. Number 8. Provide refreshers on forgotten or infrequently used tools. Programmers were the biggest professional group to reply to my query. Now, I can't say whether this is because programming is uniquely well suited to large language models or because programmers as a group are more likely to adopt novel software tools. The productivity advantages for programmers seem obvious. Now, I don't write a lot of code these days, so I haven't made much use of the well publicized feature of writing code automatically with ChatGPT. But since a lot of coding is relatively routine, the ability to have a machine create the first draft of an algorithm clearly saves a lot of time. While there are cases of people with zero programming knowledge relying on AI output to build applications, I suspect these might be tricky to debug and maintain. In contrast, an expert programmer can override ChatGPT's output for a language he or she knows particularly well. The place large language models seem to work really well is at the fringes of a programmer's expertise. So many people told me that they found AI helpful in getting starting hints using an unfamiliar language or tools. Their base of programming experience allowed them to make sense of and implement the output, but their unfamiliarity with the language or tool meant that the AI ended up saving them a lot of time. Number nine, generate flashcards based on text. Tentative. Flashcards are a powerful learning tool, but they're also a pain in the butt to make. 
Some readers said that they were using ChatGPT to generate flashcards for subjects they were studying. This seems well within large language models' abilities as a calculator for words. Thus, with the correct prompts, you could probably get pretty good results here, provided you're inputting the materials you wish to see transformed into flashcards and not expecting ChatGPT to generate facts on its own. However, given the difficulty of making good flashcards, I probably wouldn't enter any into my Anki deck without reviewing them first. Nonetheless, making flashcards is tedious, so getting a first draft that you later review could speed up the process considerably. The risks here also seem relatively limited if you confirm the card's correctness before you put them in the deck. Number 10. Use it to organize your notes. Advanced. So as someone who does a lot of research, I often waste a lot of time trying to locate my notes. Robert Martin finds the same problem. So you search via keywords and you have issues because sometimes you can't remember the exact term you used, even if the meaning is roughly the same. Martin solves this problem by using the embedding feature of large language models. So while not strictly ChatGPT, this tool is from the same family of natural language processing techniques to allow you to find semantically related notes rather than exact keyword matches. Personalized large language models that live on your hard drive and have access to your existing data may be a valuable application. Now, I'd love to be able to search things I know I've seen before, but can't quite seem to recall where. Some things not to do. First, don't expect AI to get facts right. ChatGPT frequently makes stuff up. These hallucinations are problematic if you depend on ChatGPT to give correct answers. The prevalence of these mistakes is difficult to say for now. When Wikipedia was released, for instance, experts were in an uproar about how the user-generated nature of the website meant it could never be relied upon as a source. Except, Wikipedia actually does fairly well and some of these knee-jerk reactions were misplaced. Now, large language models have definitely not reached Wikipedia's quality in terms for facts, but we still don't know much about when they're likely to give a right answer and when they're likely to make stuff up. For now, it seems best to use them in situations where the cost of an incorrect answer is minimal, either because you can look it up from a verified source or because your use of the AI isn't factual in nature. Number two, don't expect AI to get the citations right. While large language models sometimes mess up facts, they seem abysmal at getting citations. They frequently invent authors, papers, studies, and whole lines of research. I wouldn't use a large language model for any research I needed to cite, and I would always double check the sources it does provide. Similarly, I wouldn't ask ChatGPT to give me a reading list or references to specific books or authors, unless the authors were quite famous and likely to be well represented in the data set. Number three, don't expect AI to get the math right. I believe it's a mistake to attribute general intelligence to large language models based on their ability to do many tasks at a human level or beyond. As with chess bots or image classifiers, the technology is extremely narrow compared to what we would expect of a human who could score similarly on verbal tests. One finding from cognitive neuroscience is that much of reasoning is performed by different brain subsystems than those that are devoted to language. Now, This paper here argues that large language models seem to match some of the neurological evidence from double dissociation studies. You can have fluent verbal abilities and seriously impaired reasoning and vice versa. As such, ChatGPT and other large language models are really bad at math, and not just higher level math that humans struggle with. Large language models often fail at basic counting tasks. Thus, I suspect that they would be uniquely bad at a task such as providing practice problems for a math class and grading the answers. ChatGPT might be able to explain a math concept well, but be unreliable at actually using it. So those are some of the tips that my readers sent me. What are some of the tips that you would share for how to use these applications to learn and study better? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you.